I was in the sandwich generation. In 2010, we passed an invisible line in this country. We now have more seniors living in America than children, more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 18. There are 55 million people supporting at least one older loved one, one out of every six people. In addition to that, in 2010, the government, and I love how the government does things, they tried to estimate if we paid families for supporting their elders, how much would we spend as a nation? And that amounted to $450 billion. That was their estimate. And that was the year that we spent about $520 billion on Medicare. Now, the number itself is almost irrelevant because it's like saying, what would, should we pay parents for parenting their children? But the key word there is family. Whether your parents live in the neighboring town or in the other part of the country, our nation is still very dependent upon the family to be the primary caregivers for aging loved ones. And as you know, in less than 20 years, there'll be 70 million baby boomers who by definition will be elders, although I haven't yet to meet a baby boomer who thinks they're going to become an elderly person, <laughs> myself included. Um, when, if you're at the start of this journey, um, here's a way to think about what's about to happen to your family. Mary Pfeiffer, who's a wonderful um, psychologist and a fabulous author, wrote a gem of a book called Navigating Another Country. It was about aging in rural America. And she talked about aging as a transition from the young old to the old old. Now think about that for a minute. My siblings aren't here. My family, we have two very different fam you know, distinct families. I have siblings who are 65, 68, and 70 years old. So they, by definition, though they don't want to hear it because they just don't want to hear it, they are the young old. They're grandparents, they're working, they're traveling, they're committed to their communities, right? And as time marches on, whether it's diseases, heart, heart um, disease, cancer, or a stroke, those are the top three, or an accumulation of illnesses, they will, like all of us, at some point pass into the old, old stage. The great news is longevity is a wonderful thing we have all going to benefit from. The fastest growing segment of the population is the 85 and older crowd, which is terrific. Back two summers ago, I visited my sister-in-law in New Hampshire, and as I arrived, her father and mother were heading out the door to go blueberry picking. He was 99 years old, and she was 86. So the old, old, this transition doesn't necessarily, isn't tied to age, but it's tied to the degree to which people begin to become a little more dependent. One piece of feedback I've got from the book is this. Being the oldest daughter, I was the youngest daughter, the youngest of five, I felt it was my job to find out all the answers when I didn't even know the questions. You don't know what you don't know about this stage.